I know you do. I know so you're, you're like a kind of walking Chinese water torch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, have we got Ladder 49 today? Rick, there's a number of cracking DVDs as ever on Rockbusters. Um, we've got The Life Aquatic mm. with Bill Murray. We've got Howard and uh, Kumar Get the Munchies. <laughs> there is Stoner Comedy. And uh, Batman the Animated Series. And Ladder 49, there it oh, is. Oh, Phoenix. Yes. If you're interested, if you've never seen Ladder 49, then you can give us a quick text review on uh, 83 xm I'll be interested to know if, it, if it's Why actually. Why we've given away one a week <laughs> for the last six weeks? Yes. Yeah. Well, we better stand then. Let's do Rockbusters for the last time. You can win those amazing prizes. All right. Um, as always, just a little cryptic clue, some initials of a band or an artist, work it out, email in or text in, that's it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, the first one, uh, Richard Kid, uh, Richard's Kid, yeah. cuts hair for a living, mm -hmm. Richard's Kid, cuts hair for a living, mm -hmm. initials BD, right, BD. Richard's, a, R Richard's kid cuts hair for a living. Second one. I have a problem saying the French word for well. Hmm? I think, I think that's, that's the right word, anyway. Well. I have a problem saying the French word for well. So what's that? that initial there is K. Right, band or artist. And then uh, the third one. You take eight kebabs, two kebabs, 57 kebabs, times it by 27 kebabs. Right, the fella is struggling to work it out. What's 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 that? What's going on there? <laughs> right, it's a good question. D S, D S is the answer there. Eight kebabs, two kebabs. I've got it. Fifty-seven kebabs times it, uh, twenty-seven or what have you. Fella is struggling working it out. What yeah, is I've it? I've got that one. D S. So uh, just email in Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co uk or on the text eighty-three nine three six. Yep. Yeah, and you can win uh, Ladder 49 and those other DVDs. Plus, you go into the draw, which we'll do before we leave, and you can win the uh, signed by Matt Groening, personally drawn uh, Homer Simpson. We've got the Spinal Tap poster signed by uh, Christopher Guest, and, uh, and also the, the original um, artwork of us uh, as Flanimals. But they've all been framed. They've done a brilliant job. It really is, it really is a nice prize. I mean, almost too good to give away. A little bit annoying. Is it too late to take that back? Well, I was thinking we could sneak in a, a copy. Yeah. It's a very bad photocopy, so it goes grey and, uh, yeah, yeah. No, they're all originals, so, uh, keep, get texting. Alright. Alright. XFM. R.E.M. Night Swimming. Beautiful song. Brilliant band. I've got to introduce them, and I'm actually nervous. Yeah. I never get nervous. You never get nervous, do I you? I never get nervous, and I get a little adrenaline rush. It just takes, what is it, 80% of the world's population to be watching you, <laughs> <laughs> and then you get a little bit jittery. And I don't know what to wear. No. No, this is interesting, actually. I don't know. Uh, no, 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 no. I, uh, I, for a moment, though, I was thinking maybe Ricky's got a pop home coach before he goes down. <laughs> to bring on the band, but if you are watching it or if you're there, obviously you're not there, if you were there you wouldn't be listening to this, but if you're watching it on TV, do check Ricky out because how do you describe that particular look? Ricky's wearing, uh, sweatpants. I assume they're sweatpants. They're not pajama bottoms, are they? They're, yeah, they're sweatpants, they're sort of, And yeah. you've got just a white t-shirt, cheap and plain white t-shirt, yeah. and it, basically Ricky is wearing, <laughs> it's like, he's made so little effort. The only, the, he could have made, the only reason he, the only way he could have made less effort was if he wasn't wearing any clothes. <laughs> and he was just wearing his underpants that he slept in. But he's actually bothered to put on a t-shirt as a pair of sweatpants and some trainers. Yeah, well... I mean, what, what, Jonathan Ross is going to probably be wearing a suit, one of his, you know, expensive suits yeah. or whatever and... Yeah, but he won't be as comfortable as me. Oh, true. Did yeah. it not occur to you for a moment to maybe make slightly more of an effort? Perhaps put on a jacket? <laughs> a jacket? It looks silly with tracksuit bottoms. Well, again, you could have changed the tracksuit bottoms. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they're a mainstay off the outfit, are they? It's like, they're not changing for anything. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've got very little things that I, I haven't got a drawstring or an elasticated waistband. No, sure. I don't really don't want to be bothering with buttons and zips and hooks. There's going to come a point, isn't there, where you're just going to wear, I don't know, smocks. <laughs> baby grow. Baby grow. Yeah. Baby grow with a flap. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great, yeah. wouldn't it? Those little mittens. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that'd be great. And then they're oven gloves, so I'm just going to stuff out the oven, eat it, let it drop everywhere. Yeah. Right, and then just get out of the Those kind of red flannel things with the, 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 which cowboys wear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The kind of buttoned up. Yeah, yeah they're, 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 they're old cowboys. Yeah. Ground, but he comes out with the shotgun. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> the long johns. 
Well, um, how's it going with Rockbusters? Has anyone got the answers? Um, Actually, one guy is, uh, he take texted and he, uh, James and Deptford, he's, uh, offered some answers, and he says here, the guy that hated us, famously, of course, we should have remembered, Dickie Anderson. Dickie Anderson! Richard Anderson, of course. Uh, oh. I, don't, I don't know if Dickie's still listening. If he is, obviously email in ricky.gervais at xfm.uk, uk and, uh, tell us what you've been doing, what, how you've been keeping busy and stuff. Yeah. Nice to hear from him. Chris Campling hasn't called, has he, either? No, oh, Campling. The one that thinks that not only is this whole show scripted, imagine that, <laughs> right? But that Carl is a character created by us. Yeah. He's actually an actor. Oh, I found him. Look at that. Really a shaved that. monkey we got. I tell you, you're gonna go along later to the Live 8 gig and you're probably gonna see some bands that can make an effort to entertain you, but oh, if you want entertainment, Rick, you know it. Well, There's only one person to book. Go on. Me. If you, if you, you know, you're perhaps yeah. gonna do, um, because I mean, I'm, I'm obviously a top well, DJ I, I, on the radio, yeah. but where my, where I really come into my own is DJing in any kind of club in Well, you told me you were DJing, uh, I didn't go to it, uh, DJing at a party, and you said the place was rocking. The place was roaring. And I loved it. Uh, Carl just, just said he was there and they weren't. Well, that's nonsense, Carl, because you, you know very well that when I was put, I'd put on a tune, they'd cheer. Yeah, but it, it was late on in the night, they would have done that, whatever you put on. That's nonsense, they said they were happy and everything. I'm not saying they were having a good time. It was your party. It was it was all right, but they weren't going mental like you're you're sort of making up. They were definitely going mental. Nah, when I put on the nah. proclaimers, they could not believe their luck. Yeah. <laughs> they they would have walked a thousand miles. <laughs> was it good though? Was he? Were they really? What were they doing? Were they dan They were dancing, were they? It's dancing and that, but they weren't sort of cheering, going you know more and all that at the end. What's up? Oh, Take wow. on me came on, they, they, they big, yeah. big cheer with that. Oh, I don't know who to believe. I've been there, done it, Steve. I've, I've been the DJ as well, haven't I? Oh, it might be jealousy. It I might be like a special jealousy, though. Like a, yeah. I think it's because my fortunes are on the up, and his are on the down. You know, we all know famously that he had people making music, making music didn't his happen. DJ outfit. Didn't happen. Did, didn't. I did enough. I just wanted to do enough to pay for the equipment. <laughs> and I did. And that was that. But I don't like crowds, do I? <laughs> but you're safe, aren't you? You're behind the little thing with the yeah, flashing lights. So. There's still a lot of people and that. Forced fun. Don't like that. Forced fun. not forced fun. They haven't got to dance if they don't want to dance. Yeah. Don't like it. What do you mean your fortunes are on the app anyway, DJ? Well, I'll tell you, I was uh, hired, well, I say hired, I did it as a favour to a friend uh, at his wedding the other week. And I got there, I was thinking, yeah. Because I, you know, everyone was, everyone had their little role to play, and then people were doing a good job. God, I love you taking it seriously. And I, did, I spent ready. ages putting together some CDs, <laughs> special selection CDs. I love that! Because what I did was I, I burned them on iTunes. Did you turn up with your own headphones round your neck? Uh, own headphones, wearing a suit, but headphones. A metal case. Didn't need it, just had them all in one small box. <laughs> Brilliant. Boom. Um, I thought this is good stuff. I got some classics here. Give me an example. Give me an example of that, like the, the, the first hour, the warm up hour. Rick, um, I've, I'm coming straight in with uh, Frankie Valley. Oh, what a night. Brilliant track. I mean, when those beats start at the beginning, who's not getting on the first one? Wait a minute, what's this followed up? Dun, go on. It's the Jacksons. Well, I want you back. I want you back. Brilliant. It sounds good at the moment, Carl. Yeah. So um, I'm thinking like, this, I'm going to I'm going to roar this, but because you know they laid on a good spread, the ceremony was nice, food was nice. I'm thinking this is going to be the the piece de resistance. Yeah. Alarm bells started ringing. Why? When I realised there was a marquee outside. Of course, it's a balmy summer evening. I'm stuck inside uh, on the dance floor. Inside, I'm thinking I'm going to be struggling here to get them in. <laughs> even with even with flavours like this, I thought I struggle with. <laughs> so I'm sat there in my suit. <laughs> No, I'm sat around this little DJ console. <laughs> I've got all the big numbers. It's one or two people making some token effort, but finally most people are outside. Oh, no. so I was livid. Of course, they couldn't hear it out there. So I was playing to an empty room, really, and I was furious. I was absolutely furious. Because, oh, no. I mean, what is, you know, you're wasting my time. <laughs> you're wasting now, I could have just stepped the CD on. They're wasting Frankie Valley's. They're wasting Frankie Valley's. They're wasting, you know, D Light's time. Yeah, you get. And, uh, so I'm sat there and there's like, yeah, there's a couple of people making a cursory effort. Mainly when they come to get a drink from the bar, they might have a little no. quick, you know, a couple of two. Are you shout, we don't want your bar. Not interested. Or, 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 yeah. All of your no All of your no one at all. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, then there's, there's a microphone set up because people have been doing speeches. This little girl gets on the mic, right? It's being funneled through the speaker system. So every time I put my headphones on, oh, it's dynamite, was it? <laughs> it wasn't sadly Miss Dynamite. Although she decided to uh, have a little go at emceeing, she was screeching her little head. Oh, off. Was she? Oh, I don't know, eight or nine. <laughs> at their most annoying. <laughs> when, when children are, they're most annoying because they got a bit of confidence there. They're a bit cocky. They're not shy anymore. They're a bit arrogant. Yeah. She's screeching her head off. So I'm playing, you know. Oh, she doesn't know. In your face. I'm playing into the groove. No one's getting. <laughs> the group and she's, and she's going mental, she's just going, oh, yeah, what's this, what's this, I don't know what this is, play something I know. Uh, I mean, I've got any bloody DJ Otsu. 
<laughs> of Crazy Frog. I'm not going to play what, what you. So she's just screeching along, ruining it for everyone. And I say it when there was no one there. So me, she was ruining it for me. <laughs> I bet mean, you were really I'm angry. Furious. But of course, as well, every time she screeched, it went through my headphones. <laughs> so I. Uh, so, of course, I'm here, and then this, her dad comes along, <laughs> and I'm thinking, you're right, he's gonna, he's seen what's I just imagine you in your suit, sweating, getting annoyed at someone Literally. ruining your set that yeah. no one's listening, no one's to. listening to. <laughs> I think, you're, oh, her dad's coming over, he's gonna put, put pay to this, he's realised that, you know, she's causing a disturbance. He comes over there, joins in! No. Sits her, sits her on the lap, on his lap, he's just saying, hey, she's having a whirl of a time, I'm thinking I'm furious. I'm thinking it's his responsibility to shut her up, he's yeah, not gonna do anything. I what agree. can I do? I can't step in. No. And I know very well that if I interfere, he's gonna say, oh, well, she's enjoying herself and no one's dancing anyway, and we were just going to a frat car. Yeah. I didn't want to start a fight. No. Cause so, um, I don't know, but he'd have knocked you out, wouldn't he? Someone would have got knocked out. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm not saying who it would have been, but, you know, but there was, to bear in mind, Rick, there would have been two of them. <laughs> And, um, so I didn't want to get into a fight with him. <laughs> and, um, uh, anyway, so I'm playing, anyway, so my friend came along, he, he realised what was happening, and I didn't have the guts to, uh, to unplug the microphone, because uh, he'd have known, you see. Yeah. So I got my friend to do it when she had her back to me. <laughs> <laughs> so he pulled the plug out, she, the microphone went dead, she went, what's going on? I went, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I said, I don't know. She said, where the microphone was? I said, you must have broken it. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't know God. what's going on. Someone will probably make you pay for that. Oh and, uh, anyway, at least we shut her up. <laughs> that is great! But, uh, <laughs> but it just went, it really went from bad from worse. <laughs> you know there's that thing when you panic, you start panicking, so you start, you're putting on a lot of flavours that you would have saved to the, the, the last hour. What are we talking, business shakes, shakes, shakes Exactly, in. you're throwing them in early, Love yeah. Shack's coming on way too soon. Really? Oh, Love Shack before 11. <laughs> it's heresy. The, uh, the, I made the bride go and get some people in. I thought, I said, look, it's your special night, <laughs> alright, and they're gonna enjoy this. I'll be honest, love, this is a washout, and it's up to you <laughs> exactly. to turn this way yeah. around, or I'm walking. I'm walking, and I tell you, they're gonna have a sour memory of this evening, yeah, unless you so send some go people in. everyone in dancing. So, I, so she got him in at the end, and, and I'll tell you this, Carl, I mean, I don't know what you say, but they were loving it. They were absolutely loving it. A bloke came over and said, have you got Amarillo? I said, no, but I put on something even better, Delilah. I have never, I mean, wedding crowds always go for Delilah. Let's, uh, a song, of course, about old man killing his wife. It always goes down very well, strangely, at weddings. They get into a sort of hokey cookie thing. They went yeah. berserk for it. And I was following it up with, I had the monkeys, I had all sorts going on. Brilliant. Of course, you know what happens. What? I'm going great guns. People are absolutely loving it. They're rocking it. I'm throwing, um, uh, Oh, I, I had something cracking on at the end of Come On Eileen, of course, was on. People sure. were going berserk for it. Which is unfortunate because the bride's name was Eileen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, then the bride pipes up, I'm throwing the uh, bouquet. So they all trapes off outside again. Oh. I was furious! Oh no. I, grabbed, I put the microphone back in, I said, what are you doing? <laughs> We got, you know, but they went out there, and of course you can't get them back once they've done that, because all the women are running around, I got the, I got the, you know, thing, yeah. and then they got to wave everyone off, throw the confetti. They, ru they ruined your day. I was having a great time, and they ruined it. She ruined your special day. She ruined my special night. Oh, no. You know, what, would you, what would you put on about now, Carl? Well, I thought it was DJ. Yeah. Probably about a world party. Go on, oh, Interesting. <laughs> Message in the box. Put the message in the car. Drive the car in the world. And uh, uh, I'm imagining that that message is make poverty history. Um, <laughs> that's world party. Put the yeah. message in the box. Yeah. Um, can I just say quickly while I think of it? Um, we get a lot of emails from people, a lot of texts saying, "Can you say? You know, can you send a big shout out? Mm. Stuff like that." You know, I've just looked at one now. Scott and Julie in Australia are listening. They want a big shout out. Big shout yeah. to them. But there's so many people that do it, and I'm um, obviously just want to say, sorry we never get to your emails, we're very, very lazy, we never really get to look through them, um, but we obviously do appreciate you emailing in, texting in, stuff like that. Um, and also, can I send a big shout out to my grandparents, who I believe might be listening, on their new digital radio? They're pretty high tech. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. This country. yeah. Are, they, are, they, are they the merchants of, uh, uh Bristol? The merchants, yeah. 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 Props Good. to them. Props to them, yeah. Um, oh. yeah, no, uh, it's a slightly truncated show, isn't it, today, Carl? We've got I don't no like it. I don't like change, and that's what's happened. I'm not you don't see you. You're like Rain Man. Yeah. He really is like Rain Man. Uh, anything change, it, 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 it's got to get in a little routine. You can't. Uh, no, I don't like to. I'm not like Suzanne's mum and dad and what have you, where routine cannot change no matter what. Like what? Well, we've talked about it where, you know, if it's a Tuesday, I'm having sausage, egg, and chips no matter where I am. <laughs> That's, that's what they're like. Right. That's, yeah. what, that's what they'll remember, actually. When I'm saying about stuff about Live 8 and all that, you know, people will remember. If people said to a dad, you know, you remember Live 8? Okay, what day was it on? Tuesday when we had sausage and chips. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes. But the thing is, today, normally we have a bit of a, you know, I know what we're doing where and all that, and it's all sort of messed up. 
We don't usually know what we're doing where. We no. say, what should we do next? No, you but, know what? but I know, like, Rockbusters has been done early. Right. So that's, that's normally done well, at that's really that's throwing you, Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh, -oh, uh, -oh, uh -oh. I just don't, uh -oh. I don't like all this change and that. It's messing about, isn't it? Rain Man. <laughs> so what, what do you want now? Well, what about song with the story? <sighs> See, with the... Uh, Right, well, last week. Look at him, he's in a genuinely foul mood. Uh, no, though. he's actually rocking. Yeah, he's actually rocking like Rain Man as well. Last week we did, like you say, Eric Clapton. This is the section where we play a song with a story. I think every song, if it's a good song, it's got a story. You've got to listen from, to it, to, sort of, you know, from the start. Mm. You get in the middle, you're going, oh, how's it going to end and all that. Yeah. You wait another minute, you know the ending, you're happy. But, listen but, the thing is, as Steve said, um, you know, sometimes you're disappointed with it, so it's not a good story. And as Steve said, I'm not sure you're finding what you need in a song for a story. Why don't you read a, bo uh, a book, a novel? If you want a really good story that engrosses you, and why don't you read a book? You're not going to get it from a, a pop I song. I've time for a book. Song's three and a half minutes. And that's it, is it? And that, that satisfied your... Well, yeah, it gets you thinking for a few minutes, then you move on. This then you one, stop thinking. Two minutes fifty, this one, right? It's brilliant. Go on, it's then. about, uh, last week we talked about the, the little cripple fella, right? Mm, this one... Think, uh, as I say, I don't think we say cripple anymore, but go on. Alright, this one, someone emailed in saying, if you want a song about that, this is a song you ought to listen to, right? Right. It's about this fella who, uh, basically something happened, I think he's in a wheelchair, right, yeah. for some reason. Uh... You thought that last time? His wife, um, you know, likes going out. She doesn't take him, take him with her when, when she goes out. Right. Is it Ruby, Don't Take Your Love to Town? Yeah. Good, brilliant song. Wanna just play it then? Yeah, great song. Mm -hmm. You've painted up your lips and rolled and curled your tinted hair. For God's sakes, turn around. What's it mean? Oh, it's just, uh, it's a good story. It starts off well and that, you're feeling yeah. sorry for him, but then he says, where's my gun? Yeah. Cause yeah. she's a slut. Why? Because she's going off. But what, what does, what does he expect her to do? What? Just cause it, it, he paralyzed his legs fighting for his country, presumably in the Vietnam War, says that crazy Asian war. So he's gone, he's fought for his country, he's taken a bullet, he's come home, he can't walk, he should be a hero, and then he, his wife's going around putting it about downtown. Why do I never meet women like Ruby? <laughs> Lost the magic numbers on XFM 104.9. Well, the concert's kicked off, Steve. Yeah, I'm a bit annoyed that we're still here, really. Let's try and wrap this up quick, quickly, and then shoot. No one's listening anyway. Nah, we could talk about anything. Well, we do. Yeah, true. It makes no difference. We could do a lot more swearing than we normally do. <laughs> <laughs> we do even more. I was talking to Carl the other night, um, because I've been watching, rewatching for some reason, that film Witness with Harrison Ford, where he's a uh, policeman that um, has to protect a little boy who's part of an Amish community. Amish? Amish. Amish. Yeah. And I tried to explain to Carl. You, you look plain, John Book. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, I was obviously trying to explain the Amish to Carl. Uh, he'd never heard of them. Completely stony faced. Amazing. Amazing. Um, no, for those. Okay, you explained it to him. Have yeah. you? Okay, then. <laughs> now, I don't know what you said, but I'm assuming you got it right, right? Carl, now tell me. Tell me back now. What are the Amish? It's people who, um, sort of live, uh, like in the olden times. So to them, they're sort of in about 1842 or something. So they're getting old papers and that. And they no, don't cut up no, to. No, 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 no. They don't, cut, they, they don't, they don't have telly. They don't they deny. Don't, they don't deny. That the twentieth century has happened. They just don't want to be part of it. They 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 look up and they see planes and they know what they are and they go into the town and they see it in the window of Dixon's the telly. They just they just don't want to be part of it. No, they're they're still living. They're still they are still living like it's yeah yeah that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what I mean, yeah. yeah but they don't they they know they know about everything else. They just don't want to be part of it because they think that the sort of the uh, uh, revolution um, was a bad thing. They think it, you know that society became more and more depraved, and they wanted to go away from it, and they wanted to go back to old values, and they think they don't need TV and 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 jets and that way of life. They can they can survive in the old way because the old way was better. Missing out on Live Eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but they haven't had Band Aid yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is the problem that Carl had. He, he in his mind. 
they were just a bit delayed. So yeah. that in his head, they were slowly moving towards the 20th century. They wouldn't be able to watch most of these bands, all their electric guitar. They could, they, they'd be allowed to watch Tracy Chapman. Yeah. Doing an acoustic set. Yeah. Between the bands. Yeah. yeah. That'd be all right. They'd Although in Carl's mind, it's like if he... Although they wouldn't like Fast Car. They wouldn't <laughs> like seeing about that. They go, I don't know what you're talking about. Pony and Trap. You got a Pony and Trap. <laughs> That'd be all right. But, but are they still... Do they